Great. So suppose that you have a sensor user who is being monitored and watched by a vicious sensor, and he wants to talk to a block destination on, the, on, your, on your right. Um, in this case, this sensor user will establish a connection, will send a traffic to an over destination, uh, which is, and the sensor is fine with this connection. And if the sensor user is lucky enough, and if the connection is intercepted by one of these friendly ISPs, which we call um, decoy autonomous systems, then that decoy autonomous system will uh, reroute the sensor user's traffic to the intended um, block destination. Right. Essentially, this is how the core routing works, and the kind of this summarizes essentially how any of the existing decode routing systems work. Right. So in this case, the sensor would assume that the sensor user is talking to the over destination, but in fact, because of that decoy router on the on the route, um, the user is in fact talking to this block destination, and therefore this defeats uh, IP address based filtering and sort of kind of censorship, which is one of the kind of basic techniques for censorship. All right. Now, routing around decoys is the, perhaps the most fundamental attack on the decoy routing approach. Um, and it was first proposed by Shukar Dutal at uh, CCS12. Um, in this case, the adversary, the sensor, will um, manipulate any traffic to any over destination if that connection contains a decoy router on the path, right? So even for normal user who are trying to reach to some um, legit legal destinations, non-block destinations, if that connection, if that BGP route contains one of those decoy autonomous systems, the sensor will interfere by rerouting, by, by changing the routing policy so that the user's traffic takes another route which is free of decoy autonomous systems, right? And, and potentially this, uh, this other route, this, this uh, kind of alternative route enforced by the sensor potentially could have lower quality of service, or it could be longer, or it could even be more expensive, right? It could be the route is going through, let's say, a provider autonomous system as opposed to a uh, peer autonomous system. All right, so they have to spend some money uh, or spend, uh, like, lower the quality of service in order to be able to bypass this uh, routing around uh, the route decoy routing system, right? All right, so in this paper, we are asking the question of uh, who is winning in this interaction? Is the routing around decoy attacks strong enough so that it can defeat any kinds of decoy routing system? Or are there some decoy placement strategies that are able to, in fact, defeat the routing around decoy attack, right? So we're trying to answer the question of which of these entities, which of these parties are able to win the game? Um, and in fact, we are not the first to ask this question. Uh, Shuker et al. at CCS, in their original paper where they proposed the routing around decoy attack, they in fact did some analysis, and they showed that for some decoy placement strategy, for some like placement of decoy routers on a selected number of um, these autonomous systems, they showed that the sensors can, can effectively uh, block the decoy routing system, right? And, we also, in our group, we did uh, a follow-up work in which we showed that there are some decoy placement strategies that are able to defeat the, um, um, the routing around decoy attack implemented in the Shuker et al's paper, right? So again, some decoy placement, placement strategy is able to defeat some, some routing around decoy attack. And it kind of reminds us, uh, Cersei's uh, quote from the Game of Thrones that when you play the game, the Game of Thrones, you win or you die, right? So like each of these uh, kind of uh, studies are kind of claiming that either the decode routing is winning or losing against the sensor. So we argue that this uh, work is not enough to decide on who is the winner in this game. And the reason is that each of these studies are um, evaluating some implementation of decoy routing systems against some implementation of the routing uh, of, of the of the routing around decoys attack, and therefore, this motivates us to do this study. So we design, we perform an analysis which we call uh, the game of decoys, and the goal of this analysis is to evaluate the best strategy of the decoy routers against the best strategy of um, the routing around decoy-capable um, censoring adversaries. 
And their work is diff different than, than previous work in that as opposed to uh, just uh, evaluating some decoy deploy deployment or as opposed to um, applying some routing around decoy sens censorship mechanism, we are trying to uh, evaluate the, the optimal strategies of each of these players. Right. And of course, the right solution, the right tool for performing this, this kind of analysis is game theory. So we use game theory. Uh, and we assume that uh, each of the players are rational, which is a fair assumption given what we see from the, from the real world. Um, and then we use the game theoretic analysis to find, uh, to, to see if we can decide who is winning in this game. All right, and we introduce two uh, placement strategies for decoy routing systems. The first strategy is um, a central deployment and the second one is an autonomous deployment. So we'll talk about each of these. We'll perform the analysis separately for each of these decoy, uh, decoy deployment strategies. So the first uh, deployment that we study is what we call the central deployment. Um, and in this case, there is a central decision maker for the decoy routing system, right? So there's, there's some guy, there's some organization who has some finite amount of money, so he, has, he has some budget for deploying a decoy routing system. And this guy, uh, depending on uh, which autonomous system is a better fit for running this decoy routing system, will spend this budget to um, kind of pay some of, the, some of the autonomous systems on the internet to, deco to deploy the decoy routing system, right? So this guy has a budget, he will pay a selected number of autonomous systems and th these autonomous systems will be decoy routers. All right, then this uh, kind of de deployment strategy is kind of similar to how uh, many of today's circumvention systems work. So like in Tor or VPNs, there's a central authority who has some finite budget collected, I don't know, through NGOs or some, some government funding, and it will use that funding to have a central de deployment of a circumvention system, right? So the central deployer is our first player in this game, and the second player in the game is a sensor. Uh, who is able to perform the routing around decoy uh, decisions per BGP routes of traffic. All right, so we perform, we model, the, we model this interaction as a game, and of course, for that, we need to quantify the benefits and costs of each of the players. So for the central decoy player, um, the benefit of this entity is the amount of uh, censorship resistance achieved, right? So we, we define a censorship metric in our paper, and the goal of this party, of this decoy deployer, is to use his budget, his finite budget, in a manner to maximize this uh, censorship resistance metric, right? And the cost of this party is the kind of money that he has to pay to each of these autonomous systems for decoy deployment. And we're assuming that each of the autonomous systems will uh, cost differently. So if you're a big autonomous system, you probably will, will be asking for more money. And if you are an, an autonomous system who are doing business with China, you probably would expect a lot of money in order to be convinced to deploy a decoy autonomous system, right? And therefore, there's, there's a lot of, so there, there's more detail into like how we define the cost, met, the cost of deployment for each of the autonomous systems, but um, in the end, that's the cost to the decoy deployer. And for the sensor, uh, the benefit of the sensor is, of course, um, in maximizing the censorship. So we also, we, all, we have a censorship metric, and for the sensor, the goal of the sensor entity is to maximize the censorship metric. And like I said before, performing this routing around decoy attack has monetary and quality of service cost to the sensor. So we define um, six metrics for uh, these costs, so three costs for quality of service degradation and three uh, metrics for the monetary expenses to the sensor. So by performing the route attack, the sensor will potentially have to pay some costs, either in the form of degradation of quality of service or, or in the form of like having to pay more uh, money to uh, some autonomous systems. And uh, so we quantify these. Uh, we define the utility of or payoff of, of, of each of the players. And uh, we model the whole interaction using um, a complete information game. So the, the details are in the paper, the discussion why we use this model, but in, in short, we use, a, we use a game, we use a kind of basic standard game theory model. 
And we use uh, some empirical methods to converge to the epsilon Nash equilibrium of the game, right? So in the Nash equilibrium, uh, there's not much incentive for each of the players to change, to change their strategy, and therefore that's the point that we should be looking for where, where we wanna see whether who's kind of winning the game, right? So let's look at the, some of the simulation results before I go to the second game. Uh, so of course we have simulated this um, to the, the, the game to kind of evaluate against in, in different scenarios. We are uh, simulating all the BGP routes between all the 50,000 plus autonomous systems and we're not just finding the uh, BGP routes but also the alternative routes for the sensors in order to reroute the traffic. And a good tool for doing that is CBGP, which allows us to kind of infer not just the BGP routes, but also the alternative BGP routes. And we use a couple of different data sets that you can look at. So we use data sets for AS relationships to economic relationship between autonomous systems and so on and so forth. And we also do some uh, kind of optimizations to have the code uh, be runnable in a normal time. But this, this involves a lot of simulations and every one of the uh, experiment takes uh, a couple of days or two days or something. All right, so we perform the analysis for different sensors and not just different sensoring countries, but even for each of the sensoring countries, we consider different sensor censorship profiles, okay? And a sensor censorship profile um, defines how a sensor would uh, care about each of the different sense, uh, kind of cost metrics in comparison to the censorship metric. Okay, so for instance, you, here you can see a number of, uh, a sample number of uh, censorship profiles. Uh, the irrational sensor, for instance, is someone who doesn't care about the quality of service, so the coefficient for the, the, the QoS uh, cost metrics are really low. It doesn't care if the quality of service of connection of traffic to its user goes down. Uh, he also doesn't want to, doesn't want to spend any money, so the, the monetary cost metric uh, coefficient is also very low, but he really wants to enforce a very strong censorship, and therefore the cost, uh, the co coefficient for the censorship metric is really high. And on the other hand, if you look at a QoS cautious wealthy sensor, so this QoS cautious sensor does care about the quality of service for its user, so the, the coefficient for the, the QoS cost is really high, and because he's a wealthy sensor, he also has a low uh, coefficient for uh, the monetary cost. All right, so and you can define different kinds of sensor profiles. These are just a sample of profiles that we have, for example, here. All right, so we do the analysis for different censorship profiles. These numbers are for China as the sensor. So these are all China, the same um, uh, monetary budget for decoy deployment. And you can see that for different sense, for like the same sensor for China taking different profiles, the performance of censorship is significantly different. So if the sensor, if, if China acts as an irrational sensor, and if, if they don't care at all about the quality of service for their users, of course they can achieve a censorship of like 100%, all right? Uh, but as you can see, that comes at the price of disconnecting 72% of all the internet destinations, right? And this is essentially true for like any kind of censorship circumvention system that you can imagine. If you have, if you're dealing with an irrational sensor, then there's nothing you can do from stopping them, right? I mean, the simplest thing to do is to just unplug the internet. But on the other hand, if we have a uh, rational sensor, if you have a sensor who is QoS cautious and is, even if the sensor is very wealthy, even if they have a lot of monetary resources, still there's a limit to the amount of, to the extent of censorship that they can enforce, right? So like, you can see that the, the censorship metric is much lower, even if the sensor is a wealthy sensor, they have a lot of money to do a lot of different deployments and such and such. Um, we also evaluate the censorship performance for different decoy budgets. So remember that the, the central authority has a limited budget for, um, uh, has a finite budget for, for deploying decoy routers. And uh, intuitively with more budget, you would expect that there's more censorship uh, resistance achieved, right? So it's kind of intuitive. Um, and we also compare our system with uh, the previous work, especially the work from NDSS 14, and the promising result is that the system, the game theoretic based 
the coin placement strategy that we have, we are inferring here is by far more effective than the ad hoc heuristic basis schemes uh, proposed by previous work, right? So you can see that for the same uh, deployment budget, the censorship metric is much lower for our system compared to the previous deployments. Um, and this just compares different countries. Uh, so with the same budget for deployment, you see that, of course, depending on how a country is well connected to the network, depending on how many alternative routes they have to the internet, uh, different countries will serve different, right? So you can compare Syria with China. You see that with the same censorship budget, uh, Syria is uh, much significantly kind of impacted by the decoy routing system. Now let's talk about the second uh, business model for deploying decoy routers. Uh, and this is what we call an autonomous uh, deployment. Um, in this case, there's no central authority for uh, kind of selecting the decoy autonomous systems and for paying them to be, become decoy routers. Um, instead, every autonomous system on the internet will decide for themselves whether it's good for their, econ for the, for their economic interest to become a decoy router or not, right? So like each of the routers, each, each of these autonomous systems, like 50,000 autonomous systems, will have to decide for themselves whether it makes, them, makes like, uh, economical sense for them to become a decoy autonomous system or not, right? So suppose that some of these uh, perhaps decide to become decoy ASs and perhaps many other find it too costly for them or not beneficial for them to become autonomous systems, right? And um, this kind of decoy deployment is something that hasn't been discussed before. In, in some sense, is similar to how uh, many kind of distributed network protocols work today. So like things like routing protocols or DNS, essentially these are run by kind of autonomous entities and everyone acts in order to uh, kind of maximize their economical interest, right? So we have N players, which are the autonomous systems, and we also have the same sensor player as the first game. So in this game, we have N plus one players who will make the decision about how to move forward with the SQL routing system. All right, so we do the same analysis for each of the players. Uh, for each of the autonomous systems, uh, the benefit that an autonomous system could get from deploying, an, uh, from deploying a decoy, decoy routing system is the monetary fees that they would collect for um, kind of serving decoy traffic. Right. So we assume that if, an, if a decoy autonomous system serves some decoy traffic, they will either perhaps charge the clients directly or get money from an NGO or something based, uh, based, on, the volume of traf based on the volume of decoy traffic that they have served. Right? Um, and on the other hand, they, by becoming a decoy autonomous system, they risk losing some of their transit traffic uh, re revenue because if the sensors kind of block the traffic to some of the routes that go through them, then they will potentially lose the transit traffic uh, that would uh, kind of earn it, I mean, anyway, right? So that's the kind of cost of the sensors uh, to the autonomous systems. Um, and we also have the same uh, formulation for the costs and benefits for the decoy sensor as the first game. So the sensor will like to maximize the censorship metric, but on the other hand, uh, there are a number of um, quality of service kind of costs and also um, uh, monetary expenses to the sensors. Uh, we also model this game using game theory. Uh, you can see the details, but it's a more, much more complicated game than, than the first game. It's because it involves like uh, n plus one players, where n is the number of autonomous systems. So we model this as a three-step uh, uh, non-cooperative facility location game. And again, we use some empirical methods to converge to the epsilon Nash equilibrium of the game. All right, so let's look at the results for the second game. Um, so the first thing to look at is the impact of the decoy fee on uh, the performance of the decoy routing system. So this decoy fee is the amount of traf the, the, the amount of money that they charge per decoy traffic, right? So, and you can expect that intuitively with, uh, as, with increasing this decoy fee, more autonomous system will be kind of willing to become decoy autonomous systems given the risk of losing some transit traffic. And therefore intuitively by increasing this decoy fee, uh, the censorship, uh, the censorship resistant metric will improve over uh, based on that. 
Um, and uh, similar to the first game, we do the analysis for different sensor profiles. Again, this shows uh, the analysis for China, but when they take different censorship profiles. And as the previous game, you can see that for an irrational sensor, there is nothing to stop them because they don't care about the quality of service. The sense they can imp implement 100% censorship on decode routing systems. However, for like other profiles like the QS cautious wealthy, there is a limit to how much they can do to stop uh, decoy routing systems. We also do the same analysis for different censoring countries. And again, depending on how well you're connected to the internet or the size of your network, you'll have different success given the same setting, given, given the same like decoy fee for uh, deploying the decoy routers. So when you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die, but that's not true for the Game of Decoys. Um, there's no absolute winning or uh, dying in the Game of Decoys, and it all depends on uh, the strategy that you're taking in the game, um, the economical power that you have, meaning that how much you can spend for uh, deploying decoy routers or how much you can step, spend for rerouting the traffic, and many other things like how much you care about the quality of service, your network topology, and so on and so forth. Thanks very much, and I'm happy to take questions. Okay, questions? Yeah, Jan, go ahead. Hi, thanks for your talk. Um, just go back to... Oh. No, wow, what was that? <laughs> Bonus slide. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that one. So, Earlier on the, in the other game, the mm -hmm. irrational uh, sensor could get censorship of one, but at a high unreachability mm -hmm. value. And here the unreachability is zero. So what's the intuition about why the sensor does so much better here? So the intuition is that in the first game, we have the central, authority, the central decoy deployer who has a fixed budget, and he will, he will use that money anyway, right? So he will use that money to, de to deploy decode routers on some autonomous systems. And therefore, even if the sensor, even if the sensor is like blocking, rerouting all the traffic, the, the kind of that budget would still be used for deploying decoys, and therefore there's a significant amount of kind of unreachability. In this game, however, this is being run by the autonomous systems themselves, right? So if the autonomous systems kind of become uh, decoy routers, and at some point they see that the sensor is becoming irrational, there's no point for them to remain decoy autonomous systems. And therefore, uh, knowing that the sensor is irrational, they, like, uh, no one will uh, decide to become an, an, an autonomous system. That's why we have, and this is an extreme case. Right, it's funny that you call it irrational, right? Right at the beginning, you said, we assume all players are rational. That's right. I think so the term I, I think this, exactly. So this is, in fact, the kind of the extreme point of the analysis. It's yeah. just to kind of show this kind of the relation when we go to the irrational sensors. Right. Hi. Uh, Hi. Great talk. Thank you. Um, so here you have these sensor profiles. Um, I was wondering, could your model accommodate a finer grained a uh, sensor profile in which, for example, some sensors would be willing to degrade quality of service for a certain set of website or a swath of websites, uh, but hesitant to degrade quality of service for some others. Absolutely. In fact, uh, what we've done in the paper is more fine-grained than that I'm sh what I'm showing here. It's, uh, like I said, we have three metrics for quality of service and three metrics for the monetary expenses. And uh, you'll see in the paper that we have different profiles. But you can even make it more fine-grained by making it per specific websites. Right. Thanks. Uh, so I have a couple questions about the theory of these games. One, um, is it straightforward that there's always uh, an equilibrium in these games? If they're kind of finite round, that might just be obvious. Um, so we have some analysis that uh, shows that there will be an equilibrium in the game. Yeah. Okay. Then another related to that, uh, have you, is there or could you imagine or have you done any theoretical analysis that would show the resulting equilibrium utilities in terms of the parameters? So you could ask questions about like how sensitive is it is to your choice of these parameters that we may not know actually? Um, no, we haven't done that. But in fact, uh, even the equilibrium that we're achieving is through kind of using empirical algorithms. So it's not, in fact, equilibrium, it's epsilon Nash equilibrium. So, uh, but yeah, we haven't done that ana analysis regarding the sensi sensitivity to different parameters. 
Hi, um, Hi. I want to congratulate you on the paper, first of all, because I actually tried to have a student do almost exactly the same thing and <laughs> drove him into joining a different research group. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, is possible is that the sensor could actually pay the ISP to not do decoy routing. Have you looked at that? We haven't looked at that, but in fact, that could be incorporated by, in the form of some of those benefits to the autonomous systems in the second game. So I guess you can add that as, uh, you can extend that kind of analysis, I mean, in different ways, and w that's one of the ways, right? So in fact, this whole game could be extended in many different ways, but in fact, that's, that's a way to look at how to extend it, yep. Right, because for China, I think mm -hmm. that that would be like a, a really key point. Yep, yep. Okay, I'll just finish with a small question. Mm -hmm. uh, you looked at the financial cost, you know, the financial incentive for, in particular for the centralized case, and you had this nice graph there with the financial cost, right? Maybe you can return to that graph of the centralized case, you know? Uh, which, which graphs? The graph showing with, with different level of investment by the centralized case, what, mm -hmm. what, is the what are the results? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, yeah. How about comparing that to the costs that are invested, you know, in, in, in Tor in particular? In, in Tor? Right, yeah. You mean the similar analysis for Tor? No, is, is no, it? just the amounts. S sorry, I, I didn't get that. So, uh, the amount invested in, you know, in, in support of Tor. In compared to the amount that you, you use in the analysis. Oh, I see. The, like, yeah. you mean the real, like matching to the real yeah, world. Right, yeah, so right, that's, right. that's something that that's we haven't done anything yeah. because it was kind of hard for us to obtain kind of ground truths on like what is, what, how would any of these would match to the real world. So we have, we we're mentioning this, we're leaving this for future work, but in fact, that would be really interesting to do, trying to see. So everything he, here we have is kind of, um, kind of com com comparable to, it's kind of ratios of like compared to what would be in the real world, right? But in fact, that would be something uh, useful to be done in the future, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. That's the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you. That's the end of the session. It was a business meeting now. <laughs>